And welcome, listeners, to the Two Jacks, episode 12, I think it is, Jack. Is that correct? Am I, I right? Think it so is. Got I a think dozen it is. Up? Yeah, I think we're getting the numbers right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look, Matt's never never my strong suit. Suspect uh, that never yours mine. either. No, yeah, no. good to see you here today. Yeah, that's and nice to even, be here. Even better to see you uh, because the situation in Hong Kong has got very bad. Mm. Um, we, we talked about it last week and you reported 12,000 new COVID cases uh, per day, and now we're at well, you tell me, and we're staggering uh, 50, numbers. Uh, Fifty-five, I think, on uh, uh, two days ago, and fifty-six yesterday. Fifty-six thousand cases, uh, yeah. new cases. These are the ones that the government has. No one quite believes those figures. In fact, a, a wag said to me yesterday evening that the reason it went from 55 only to 56 is that 56 or 57 is about all of the testing um, capacity they've got, <laughs> so they can't get beyond that. Um, yeah. but, the, but the Hong Kong Free Press ran a, a, a really nice piece uh, interviewing a whole lot of people who have had COVID or have COVID and are at home and not reporting right. it, and there were various reasons for that. Um, some of them didn't know you had to. Uh, that, that surprises me a bit. Um, some of them said, mm. yeah, "Yeah, some of them said, well, look, we tried to ring, we tried fifty times to ring the number to report the fact that we had COVID and couldn't get through, um, uh, and gave up." Um, and quite a few said, well, I'm not going to report it because if I report it, they might whack me in Penny Spy or something, you know. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, and you just wouldn't want to go there. You know, no, no one in their sane mind would want to go and have quarantine. No, that's the Penny Hong Spy. Kong Designated Quarantine Centre. Each, reported- each, one, each one of them. Each one of them. Um, uh, you but, reported but if- big problems before, electricity, blackouts, no internet, you know. Yeah, uh, it's, even, it's, it's even gotten worse than that. There have been suicide mm-hmm. attempts and all that sort of stuff and right. you know people being held there for 26 days when the rules say 14 and all they've just been forgotten about you know um, oh my god um, so and, it's all, it's all. Uh, and, and pretty rough and ready but with those sorts of numbers 55 56 thousand new cases um and and because of a sort of zero covid policy anyone who tests positive basically is they want essentially hospitalised. Is that correct? Yeah, the, the, the rules still say that, that that if you uh if you test positive, that you're supposed to go into uh, into originally it was hospital or, or into one of these other similar facilities, um, and that's been honoured in the breach now. Um, I think right. that last last count there were over sixty thousand people who had notified the government they'd tested positive and were waiting at home for the bus to turn up to take them somewhere and it wasn't mm. turning up. So hasn't turned up. The, 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 the mass just don't up. There isn't there isn't the, there aren't the facilities to, to, to isolate all of these people. Um, meanwhile, uh, the, the government here, with the assistance of the mainland, are building new facilities. Mm-hmm. But, but I don't think they can. Build, you know, if we're going to have, if we're going to have fifty thousand plus cases a day, and, the, and it's a big plus, I think. Um, there's no way all required to yeah. in place in quarantine or in a, in a healthcare setting. Yeah, a government camp, effectively, um, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, and. Um, um, and and they, there's there's really no way they can build those facilities quick enough to cover to, to cope with those kind of uh, numbers as they come in. Um, yeah, so-, so you've got well the hospital the hospitalisation numbers are, are quite low. Uh, you've had a hundred, yeah. I think you had 117 deaths on Wednesday, and just just to make that clear, 80 yeah, percent yeah. unvaxxed. 117 on Wednesday, 145 or something on the, on Thursday. Right. Uh, around 80% of them seem to be unvaxxed. They're mainly elderly, uh, which is the mm. – that's the gap in our vaccination system. Yeah, the, vaccine, yeah. the vaccine numbers for the young people are not too bad. They're not brilliant, but they're okay. But the vaccine numbers for the over 80s in particular are very, very poor, very um, poor. still under 40%. Yeah. Um, and um, and they're not that flash for the seventy pluses either. Um, yeah. but, but, um, so um, the sad thing is, I, I think the only realistic prospect is that we're going to lose quite a few of the unvaxed eighty pluses and seventy pluses um, uh, 
in the next month or so. And they're either going to get very, very ill or worse, you would imagine. But the yep. hospital uh, the hospital figures themselves aren't that bad with these huge numbers of cases easily exceeding New South Wales. We've drawn that parallel in the past because you've got a sort of similar-sized population, much, longer, much larger land area and population density uh, is much higher in Hong Kong, land area much much smaller, of course. But the hospital figures aren't that bad. 144 uh, yeah, that's, COVID-19 that's, that's, patients that's, in hospital. That's what the hospital authority said this morning. But um, the South China Morning Post also ran a piece that um, uh, from interviewing a couple of the doctors at the hospital and saying how bad the situation was there that they had people on trolleys, on ambulance trolleys that they had refused to give back to the ambulance drivers because they needed them as beds. Um, and, you know, doctors say that they were just unable to, to come and look after people in a timely manner. So um, uh, so you know, that, that 144 is probably not right or it's reflective right. of perhaps those that were, those that were uh, COVID positive but perhaps even in asymptomatic, they've, they've been shuffled off to hospital as well rather than yeah, back at home yeah. where they perhaps should have been. So, so that's a know, problem, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. Look, 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 look there was a, a terribly sad case of a patient who'd lost consciousness. He was a diabetic and um, they think oh his blood sugar levels just got too high and uh, unfortunately he had, they hadn't fed him, you know. And, uh, and so, he died. Yep, he died. Yep, so, yeah. Yep, yeah. so no, no, no. He's, he's, he, they managed to get him in time, but you know, right. um, but you know, that's kind of really bad care. So, yeah, you know, people are fleeing Hong Kong, um, mm. but they're uh, they're not. I don't think they're really fleeing in fear of the virus. They're fleeing in fear of being caught up either in a hospital in, under these circumstances, or being put into what's effectively a government camp. Yeah, look, at it. I'm sure that's true. Look, and just going back on that parallel with New South Wales, so you're in the first week of March, you're where we were in pretty much the first week of January. I mean, there's higher case numbers, but the difference is that vaccination rate, and uh, particularly among high-risk groups, uh, high-risk demographics, the elderly in uh, the elderly, uh, uh, definitely. So I would imagine that you've got a pretty tough month ahead. Yeah, we do. Um, uh, the, um, I think there's not much doubt about that at all. Uh, the, we're facing uh, a near certainty of citywide testing coming up at some stage. Yes, you mentioned um, that last week. And that means they're going to try and test. It was going to be over 21 days, you know, 7.5 million people test them three times over 21 days. They're now talking about nine days. Um, so that's a lot wow. of tests. Um, a lot of pathology. And a lot of pathology. The path- a fair bit of the pathology will be sent across the border to Shenzhen to be done there. Um, uh, well, I, I know with the New South Wales testing, for example, so they, they, would, ha- they would grab 100 tests. They'd get, they would grab 100 tests and, and I would subject them to the same test and if and if there was only... It, if none of those 100 were... Sorry, if, if one of those 100 uh, was negative, they would presume the rest were. So I presume it's that sort of, it would be that sort of economy of scale, I think, that they do with the pathology. But you're still looking at, what, 8 million, potentially 8 million, uh, 8 million tests. Yeah, well, but, but of course we're part of the Greater Bay Area, which has got the population of Australia um, uh, in it. So they've yeah. got... They've got big testing capacity across the border that, that, right. that they can use. So, you know, um, and not just relying on a testing system that's designed for seven and a half million people. So, so, so tests, yeah, okay. So even if that's effective over that nine-day period, when will it be, do you think? There's an argument about that. The, the, we, 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 the, the mainland um, officials who are down here, they want to do it sort of sooner rather than later. The local experts want to wait until the peak has passed and so do it at the end of the month. Um, so starting on about the 26th of March. Um, and it does make then, sense. It does well, make sense. You, you basically just got to hunker down for the next month and, and then yeah. and then try and deal with it in, in at a reasonable or manageable size at that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, no one's quite sure how that 
debate within the government's yeah. going to play out. Um, uh, then there's the question of whether we whether we go into a lockdown. And the idea, original idea, was that we would have a, a fairly strict lockdown, um, more strict than the, a Victorian lockdown, but perhaps without a curfew, um, uh, during the testing period. So that's that's still up for debate as well. So there is, yeah, the, there's a lockdown still possibly there. What about panic buying? Yeah, yes. have you got so, enough toilet paper? Have you got enough toilet paper, mate? <laughs> yeah, well, I think I'll be right. Um, uh, the uh, the supermarkets um, uh, were pretty much stripped bare. I walked through my other day just for a look, um, you know, um, uh, and you know, Hong Kong's a city where we love a rumor, you know. Uh, so, uh, um, so take care. So, so I'm, I'm going to say. No toilet paper, fresh food and uh, fruit, those sorts of yeah, things would be difficult yeah, to all, get. All gone. Eggs, noodle, eggs, eggs yeah. noodles, all that sort of stuff, all gone. So, you know, mm. we'll, have to, we'll have to see how that pans. The, the EU consul the other day uh, told the government that 10% of uh, Europeans in the city had left in the last year or so. Um, which was an interesting figure. I mean, that's certain, that certainly fits with my observation that there are a lot fewer expats around um, yeah. and, um, and and indeed a lot fewer, not just expats, but of the um, kind of the mobile uh, locals as well. And, and you were saying uh, a couple of weeks ago you found yourself in the pub, which is unusual, but you, you found yourself in the pub and there was just a small group of you and everybody else was having farewell parties. Yeah, so pretty ob- much. Obviously yeah. there are a few leaving. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, there, there certainly is an air of, you know, um, uh, we're, we're leading up to the, the, the fall of Saigon and about the city at times at the moment, you know, that we, we're just waiting for the last chopper to leave the top of the building. You know? <laughs> you, you have the arms, you're going to be able to hang on? Yeah, yeah, well, I know I'm, I'm going to be stuck here, I, I think, you know, so. Yeah, uh, you're, you're in it for, 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 I'm, I'm, for, for better or worse. Yeah, I'm going to be a stay behind, so, you know, I'll probably uh, get out when I get on my boat in about five years' time. <laughs>